guess I need more practice. Hello, I'm Mose Persico, and welcome to a brand new series we affectionately call The Melting Pot. In the next 13 weeks, we're going to be taking you to various dining establishments and restaurants in and around Montreal to show you what the chefs have in store for 2010. We're going to be offering you tips, suggestions, speaking to the movers and shakers of the culinary world and see how they can help make your dining experience a more pleasurable one. We're also going to be going out on location to a very special destination, which you believe Central America. That's right, for two special episodes of The Melting Pot. But we begin our series first with a visit to Plaza Volare here on Cotillies inside the Crown Plaza Hotel. This is the crown jewel of the Plaza Management Group and we'll show you why party here really is a family experience. So join me in the next 30 minutes for The Melting Pot. Chances are, when you walk into Plaza Volare here at the Crown Plaza Hotel, you're going to bump into the chairman of the board himself. This is Vince Verena. Vince? Hi, Mo. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a pleasure to have you here. Buddy. Thank you. You've been in the reception hall business for over 50 years. Yes. Between myself and my wife and my family, we've been 50 years in the food business and the reception hall business, which we pride, take pride and enjoy doing. And you call Plaza Volare your flagship reception hall. Why? Well, because of a, a, we have a lot of rooms in this place here. We're centrally located and this is where I come, uh, I work from and I designate the rest of the reception halls also. And top-notch food. Food is the, our pride and joy. When people come to our place, they have to eat well, get served well. Very important. He's the chairman of the board. He knows what he's talking about. Let's go in the kitchen. Who's in the kitchen? Oh, Pino Bienza. He's amazing. You'll see the times that he comes. Very original. Remember Very those original. old Bon Marche commercials? Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's go. All right. Let's go. This segment brought to you by Plaza Management Group. Excellent reception hall service for all your celebratory needs. Promotional consideration provided by Rose Hill Foods, the flavor people. Padessa Group, the specialists in Italian brands. At ABR, we teach techniques which help children with brain injuries. In spite of the brain injury, our new approach permits the realignment of the musculoskeletal structure. For your free pre-assessment, visit us at avrcanada.com. So here we are at Plaza Volare in one of five kitchens with not one but two executive chefs. This is Giulio Dimino right. and this is Pino Brienza. Right. Brienza and Giulio is going to be doing the translating because it's really authentic over here and Pino feels that his English is not up to par. So <laughs> Giulio is going to do the play-by-play. Okay, first of all, tell us what are the appetizers here going to be today on our show. Okay, so here, uh, first of all... Go ahead, Pino, start cooking. We, want, we, we like to do things a little different, you know, using these traditional ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, so we're making it, three appetizers. Absolutely. Traditional ingredients, you know, the best tasting, simple dishes, to the point. The look is beautiful very trendy okay new. this looks like a ham of sorts is it it's a cured ham okay which is called a speck mm -hmm. um there's not a lot of fat on it it's on the back side of uh the and, pork and that's he's a, putting a, some torta mascarpone right now mascarpone cheese right. on that look at that okay beautiful go he's gonna wrap it around so he's okay. making like a, a a flower of sorts absolutely it'll look like a nice bouquet a baluchon a baluchon Baluchon basically So is it's important for you people to get creative. Here. Absolutely. I mean, it's not just assembly line type of cooking here. No, no, no. It? It's like we're you're in a fine dining restaurant. Right. You know, we don't do any of the assembly. You know, everything's done à la minute. Okay. And the finished product is always checked out by uh, Vince Moreno. Of course, of course. Yeah, the chairman of the board, uh, chairman of the board, makes sure that everything 
is and, to perfection. Look at this. And actually, you have lots of patience. Of yeah, he said you need a lot of patience. Of course, of course, you have to remember we're doing four, five, six hundred pieces. I guess. Wow. So there obviously, you go. obviously, the prep, the mise en place, are done ahead of time. All right. So this is a sauce. What this, is this? This is a nice puree of fig. Fig. All right? Wow. So I like that. You could, you could add. He added some rum inside. Okay. So to give it a nice sweetness. Okay. What are we Depen doing? Now? Depending on the time of the year, the figs are are, are okay. nice and. Okay. And we could do we could do many things with that. Okay, now he's he has some shrimp over okay, here. Okay, yeah. While while this is uh, being scampi. being uh, finished, we're doing some scampi. Okay, here we go. And he's gonna boil them in a cool bouillon. Cool bouillon. By the way, this is sous chef Alberto here. Alberto, look, say hi. See. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now this is a bouillon of like celery, carrots, and lemon. For the reason is you want it's, it'll be a, a cocktail style so scampi. So how, how long does that boil? That's very quick, isn't it? it it's got about maybe what. Six minutes to eight minutes okay. of, of boiling. So Not while even. that boils, let's let's do something else. What well, else? As uh, he's laying the uh, fig uh, uh, puree right. with rum, uh, he'll uh, top it off with uh, the uh, cured uh, speck, the mascarpone, which he tied with a um, a boiled leek. Okay, Julia, the scampies are about to come out of Absolutely. that wonderful lemon. So usually, vegetable. usually the scampies are chilled. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it gives it that cold cocktail style. Right, but. Because we're on TV, I mean, we've got to do right. this uh, quickly. He's going to bring them back on this side, with uh, the together with the fagotino that we prepared. He's going to place the shrimps. Right. Place them. Go ahead. And we prepared a little, little uh, cocktail mayo sauce, oh, nice. which is homemade. Uh, homemade, absolutely. Homemade Every, on the premise. Everything is done here. Okay. And as he's doing that, the focaccia, focaccia is coming out of the oven. Focaccia, which is a, a, an, a, an Italian name for pizza. Right. A very it's thin a pizza. crusted piece. Thin pizza. crust pizza, which is made also homemade on the premises. Do. There Thank you go. You. Look at that. Grazie. Wow. So give us a little of the ingredients here that goes into this. You've got focaccia. a pesto of fine herbs and porcini's. You got sun-dried cherry tomatoes. Wow. You got uh, pecorino parmigiano, Smoking fresh, in. as you see right over here. Yes, of course. And the nice cheese that makes everything amalgamate together is the uh, fresh scamorza. And of course, soft cheese. wow, that's just one of the many appetizers. Absolutely. When we come back after the commercial break, of course, Plaza Volaria has all assortments of pasta, and we're going to make a special pasta just for you at home. Stay with us as the melting pot continues from Plaza Volaria. Promotional consideration provided by Chiat, transcending time for 60 years. Sacred Heart School, the Sacred Heart School of Montreal, celebrating 150 years of excellence in education in 2010-2011. Saputo, a family tradition since 1954. Welcome back to the Melting Pot from Plaza Volare. This is another kitchen here. They have five kitchens, as we mentioned earlier. Pino is showing us a very special pasta machine. This is the gnocchi machine. It's a machine from Italy. The only one of its kind here in Montreal. Pino, and we're making a special gnocchi, right? Sì, stiamo facendo gnocchi ripieni uh, con uh, salsa vino rosso, con uh, vino rosso, la pasta vino rosso. Wine-based gnocchi with a semolina. And uh, go ahead, what is what happens? Alberto's here is making them, and they come in balls, little balls. Exactly. And this is the gnocchi. The dough was prepared with a wine, red wine. And this, is the, and this is what it looks like. And you boil them after? Exactly. For how many minutes you boil them? Couple minutes. Okay, let's go in the other kitchen and boil these wonderful gnocchi, right? Exactly. Gnocchi al vino rosso. Exactly. Red wine based gnocchi. Special machine here at Plaza Volare. Let's go in the kitchen. And yeah. Let's go. Okay, Julia, what are we going to make? Of course, pasta, gnocchi. Absolutely. And it's our homemade pasta, which we make over here. You saw the gnocchi, uh, the gnocchi machine. We're going to make a nice uh, butter and scarmozza uh, with salvia, sage. Scarmozza is the type of cheese? Exactly. That looks like a burrata, which has uh, some butter inside. Okay. So it's a traditional type of cheese. Sage smells amazing, you know, of course. And these are pappardella with rapini, made with rapini. So we puree rapinis. So my hands are clean. This, this is Absolutely. a pasta, which is homemade with rapini inside Ex already. Exactly. Rapini is a form of uh, Italian broccoli. Yeah, it's a broccoli, it's a little bitter, but Really nice, and, very traditional. And these ingredients, mushrooms? Chantaran mushrooms, a pesto of black olives, shallots, and the sauce is based on a velouté of rapini. Wow. Which sounds... is a chicken base made with rapini, thickened a little with a roux. Okay, let's begin. 
All right, Julia, these are the wine-based gnocchi. Absolutely. And they go into boiling water, salted water? Salted water, boiling water. For how long? The, uh, I'd say about three to four minutes. Okay. Not any longer. Depending on the quantities, obviously, we have the right equipment. We could serve the three, four hundred people in an instant with this. Okay. So while Pino, uh, we're waiting for these gnocchi to boil, Pino's going to start his sauce. Okay. So he warms up his pan. He's going to take the butter that's inside oh, the, uh, the cheese. The cheese. Good. All right. And yeah. how do you know when your gnocchis are ready? Do they rise to the they're top? They're going to rise to the top, which uh, they're rising very quickly. Very, very important in this recipe, you don't burn the butter. Oh, very okay? important. Because you, you want that, that freshness of the butter, not the nutty flavor, which happens if you burn right. butter. So the gnocchi go into the buttered pan. Absolutely. He's going to gently saute it. The sage is in there. Okay. And uh, gnocchi also, you can make them with a, a potato. This is a, pota a potato, potato flake and semolina base. And you make different versions of gnocchi as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. You could stuff it with meat. We could stuff it Very with good. different cheeses, gorgonzola, porcinis. Uh, Sun-dried tomatoes, asparagus. Is he putting any wine in there? No, he's not deglazing it. Again, very carefully. He is not. He is not uh, finishing up the uh, burning up the the butter. Here we go. So now we're just gonna gently place it in the dish. Wow. Are you kidding me? Was that simple? Look at his smell. Look at his smell. It was and that simple. And we're gonna finish it with, of course, well, with some nice fresh basil. Right here. And that's this. That's gnocchi with a little wine. Gnocchi based red wine stuffed with ricotta, a sage, and butter sauce. And then you put a, a, a dab of Parmesan cheese on that if they want, or this is up to the client. Okay, pappardella, pappardella. All right. Dish number two, the pappardelle that was made with rapini, cinnamon de rape, as they say. So this right. is homemade pasta, which you made pasta. once again from a dough base and all that semolina, fresh ingredients. Very important. Always using semolina, okay. a true Italian product. Okay. Pureed rapinis. Right. This is going to take a good uh, four to five minutes. Uh, and how many up. pasta dishes do you have here at Plaza Volare? I mean, you can, it doesn't just, it's not just spaghetti and meatballs. Guys, the limit. I don't even think you serve spaghetti and meatballs. Well, yeah, sometimes. If they, they want. We do a nice spaghetti once in sure, a while. Sure, sure, okay. No, but nice. How many varieties? Any, like, I would say we have at least a good 20, 30 varieties of pasta. Okay. So he's chopped his mushrooms. Yeah, on the other side here, he's chopping the chanterelle mushrooms which he will be uh, sautéing okay. in olive oil. Then he has his shallots. He's a very quiet chef, isn't he? Hey, Pino, how you doing? You Pino, okay? he's always... He's, he's, he's always, very concentrated, very, <laughs> like, you know, focused. He's like, you know... He's always concentrating on he his really, work. He's a perfectionist, as you could but see. But you know what? He Pino, you could talk if you'd like, okay? <laughs> see, see, that's it. See, Mo see. Mose Pino pulls out a thousand people, six different menus. Wow. In a span of an hour and a half, so... No wonder he doesn't talk. He's all business. There you go. Talk about what he's putting in there now. So, right now he's putting in that pesto of the olives that has a bit of tartufo oil inside. Okay. You know, you got to give that beautiful And are we going to flambe anything? You know me, I like to flambe. Not yet. Not yet. That okay. comes later on. That's for, for dish number three. That's uh, okay, coming so this is, We don't want to burn this. What is he putting in He's putting in his velouté, which okay. was made with the chicken stock and the rapini base. So this is going to thicken the sauce. Absolutely. Okay. Well, already a velouté is pretty thick because okay. of its root. And look at the wonderful colors. It, it changes colors in front of us. Again. There's the chanterelle mushroom. Again, very important. He's frying it in a different pan. That's right. Okay, and this is why, because mushrooms will release a lot of water. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not pasta which is really al dente. It's more of a soft, chewy, soft, pasta, chewy pasta. Because it's fresh pasta. Absolutely. So absolutely. it doesn't mean that it's overcooked. No. And as you see, you see this is a type of uh, sauce oh, that, look at that. that doesn't need a lot. There's your flambe. Yeah, I love it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can do that. Let's try, see. try. Not bad, eh? Be careful, you're gonna put the kitchen on fire. There go. Not bad, eh? <laughs> okay. So yeah, as I, I dropped the pappardelle in there. All here right. comes the plating. So he's gonna finish it up with. Oh, that's nice. You give it a little twist. Just, you gotta twist it, baby. Just to have a little fun. You know, a little you, chubby you... checker as you prepare that plate. Nice. And now comes the mushrooms. Here come the mushrooms. Look how Mushroom. they work in hand in hand here. Mushroom Julio and Arbino are being, here. Are being topped on top, all right? Nice. Oh my God, the aromas are absolutely amazing. And what else? The final touch? And some red basil. Red basil. Wow. Look at this. So this is our papartelli, ai rapini, 
with chanterelle and black olive pesto and tartufo. And this was the wonderful gnocchi with a wonderful wine theme going in. And that's only the pasta. That's only the pasta here at Plaza Volare. When we come back, another special dish. This is when it gets really serious here on the mountain. Like, right? Pino's you know, a little nervous. Stay with us. Another break and more from Plaza Volare. Promotional consideration provided by Raymond Weil, Watches of Geneva, Switzerland. Linter Marche Lagoria, three locations to serve you best. Tiamo Entertainment, to set the mood right for all your celebrations. BMW Laval, where joy is refusing to wait. Welcome back here at Plaza Volare on the Melting Pot with co-executive chefs Giulio and Pino. The meats, very important here. What do, you, what do we have here? Main dishes. Well, here we have some veal chateaubriand. Veal chateaubriand. Which is the center cut. Why do you call it chateaubriand? That's like a well, wine. Well, it's, it's a term. It's, it's, a, a term. A, it's a term we use in the kitchen, but well, it, it's, it's the fancy. center cut. Center cut, okay. Filet mignon veal. And that's going to be prepared with? Which is going to be seared, seared. In, in a uh, lemon rime. Ooh. Parmigiano Romano Invecchiato, which is aged Romano right. and parsley. Okay, that's a we'll, mouthful. We'll put Eight. it nicely in the egg, we'll, we'll batter it down. lentils? That's going to be our contorni. Contorni, which Light, is the uh, lightly lentils. Accompaniment. Accompaniment. Yes. Sauteed with a, a little reduction of balsamic. And you have peppers and all we that? some peppers. Okay. And, and then we go to our starches. And then the, the, the beef here. Here. This, Where's the beef? This is the beef. Right here. Yes, go ahead. Filet mignon, bone like bone he's, he's, Pino's staring at the beef. Are you oh, okay? Yeah, he's, uh, Are you mad yeah. at the beef? No, he's just... Okay. He's a meat man. Yeah. He's a meat man. <laughs> yeah. And give, give us the thickness. These are like wickedly big. 12 ounces. 12 ounces with the bone. Filet mignon. You see... Why with the bone? This is a specific cut. There's okay. only seven pieces that come out of a rib wow. of an animal. Wow. All right? So right. the bone helps protect and keep its juices. Okay. And obviously, where's the tastiest part of the meat? Oh, near the, the bone. bone. Near the bone. Okay, let's right. begin here. Go and ahead. Be I, I'm going to get out of the way. You guys do your magic. All right. Let's start. Oh, look at this. So this is what he did. It, you, you wrapped it around what you said about yeah. the aged Parmesan and, and all that. And this is going to be, what about if people want medium rare, uh, blue? You don't, how do you do well, that for like know, a thousand you try, people? You try to give uh, an even pisol, a medium well, yeah. just right after there's, you see no little blood uh, inside the meat. Or else you well, send someone like, you know, Vince's sons, Marco to kind of... Yeah, he'll, he'll take care of the customer. But no, <laughs> <laughs> no matter how they prepare it, it's going to taste good. Trust us. Absolutely. All right, go ahead, go ahead. But you explain the vegetables remember, here that you have. Vegetables are just being sauteed. Here sauteed. you've got some grollo potatoes, which we carved like mushrooms. Asparagus, nice asparagus white, white, white and green. And here you got your carrots, you got your little... Mini zucchinis and, and baby carrots. Look how small those mini zucchinis are. Wow. Wonderful. And here, which yes. is going to be an interesting contorno, is going to be some chestnuts. Chestnuts. Okay, go ahead, guys. Continue. My God, the aromas here at the kitchen. Go ahead, Julio. Now that's almost okay, ready. So this is nice and here. We're going to put it in the oven for okay. about 10 minutes. How well, many degrees? It's uh, at about 400 degrees. Okay, go ahead. Put okay, it in the oven. So let's put it. Sorry, Pino. As they work in unison here, two chefs going at it. He seasoned the meat, little now, pepper. Now we're getting the meat almost to what we want a degree, but we're going to pull it out. Okay. We're going to pull it out and we're going to let it cool down because okay, then this is going to be stuff. Wow. All right. Okay. So this is going to be stuffed. Meanwhile, meanwhile, while we're waiting, we're going to flambe some we're vegetables. We're going to flambe our vegetables. What do we need to flambe? We've got some butter and a little touch of olive oil in every pan. And the chestnuts, obviously, are being nicely warmed up. We're going to put some maple syrup in there. Okay. All right. Okay, my favorite part, Julia, the flambe of the vegetables. A oh. little white wine. That's it. Watch this. And this is optional, or does it add flavor to the dish? Oh, you could have used some chicken stock if you like. Right. I mean, uh, it's all up to you what you want to do. And what did yeah, you insert in the more. chestnuts over there? You just put in a little bit of maple syrup, just oh. to sweeten them up a little. Okay, off. good. Okay, so we're almost ready to plate our, our dishes. We're going to go and we're going to stuff the filet mignon that we seared before. That's right. Go ahead, Pino. Right. 
So he's going to stuff it with buffalo mozzarella cheese. Yes, we call it the filet mignon caprese, wow. which is with fresh tomato, the buffalo, and a nice basil. Oh my gosh, that is very creative. Wonderful dish, wonderful dish. And then you see the contornis of the arancinis. Maybe we'll use a bit of a quiche. Right. And that's going to go in the oven for how many degrees and how long? 400, 400 degrees. And... It'll last uh, a good uh, 15, 20 minutes. There it goes, in the oven there. And the veal can come out. I guess the veal is ready. While that's cooking, we can prepare the veal dish, right? Absolutely. So we're just going to take out the ingredients we don't need. We're going to clean up a bit. Wipe the counter a bit. Absolutely. With the rag. Okay, my favorite part is he wipes the counter. We're going to plate this veal that we talked about. So Pino is going to cut this. I'm just taking some veal broth. I'm, I want to just slightly warm it up. Okay, wow. We have our vegetables in the back. Don't forget we have our castanias. Which are the chestnuts. Absolutely. Here we so go. here we're just going to play. We're going to do a nice base. We always dress from the center because, you know, that's the modern way of presenting the, our food. Center to the corners of the plate. Absolutely. Okay. And nothing on the rims. Nothing on the rims. Nothing on the rims. Not even parsley, not even paprika. And we, once we again, like white, green asparagus. So Absolutely. these are the little wonderful mushroom-style potatoes. Absolutely. And now and we Pino's put the veal. Plate, he's going to place his meat. This is one portion. My gosh, this is a this is a meal and a half. Here. And here comes the wonderful sauce that you're adding. This is a nice veal demi glace, which we're just going to line it up in the middle here. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's we've, not finished yet. We've got our nice chestnut here in the maple syrup. And we'll just add it here this on the that, side. Oh Look at the smells. So if people want this, this is a veal. Well, what, what veal Chateaubriand with a demi glace of chestnuts and wow. maple syrup. Wow, that's just a veal. Now wait till you see the beef, folks. That is absolutely delightful. Beautiful you guys are gourmets. Okay, Pino, the beef. Where's the beef? The beef's in the oven. Should be almost done. Yes, it is. So here, Pino, we're going to put you this over here. Yeah, like this. There you go. This is the beef, once again, stuffed with buffalo mozzarella cheese. Now, again, we're going with our vegetables. And this one, you're using carrots. Carrots. Baby zucchini. Zucchini. Which we'll probably, we'll fan it out. I don't know where you find baby zucchinis, but leave it to the uh, Morena group to find those. Here we now go. You use all local fresh vegetables, I hope. Right? Everything is local. We go. try to encourage all. S support the farmers. Very exactly. important. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you know, we do have a lot of good ingredients here. Of course, to work with. Okay. Now we got arancini. Arancini, which, which is like a rice ball. Rice ball stuff with meat, piselli, like the rizzi bizzi. So Pino here is going to cut it in half. And this yeah. is what we're using as its contorni. Which is like the accompaniment. Absolutely. Look at that. And what's in it? It's a rice ball with some the cheese. rice ball. We don't need this anymore. We could we could also use uh, a little quiche as a contorni. Right. Again, go back to those little potatoes. Pino, you're gonna put the meat. I'll prepare the sauce. Here comes the meat. And what type of sauce are you gonna be making? Again, it's a, a beef, a beef um, tenderloin very, stock. Very nice. Very nice. Which I'll add some of the lentils that we talked about. The lentils. Just warm it up a little bit with the uh, the broth that we have prepared here. Okay, the sauce okay. is ready. Once so again, again, it was lentils. I put the lentils, but you could use kidney beans. You could do the the red beans, the, the white beans. Not a problem, you know. Okay, any beans and this that is, you like. It's very local, a, a nice local style because you know when go you ahead, go, go to Cabana Sucre. Yes, go ahead. And Wait. you have the beans in the sauce. They're so excited <laughs> to speak, they don't cook. <laughs> we have to speed up the process. And there you go, and you garnish it off with a little. Spice there and a little Some olive oil. Time, olive oil. And here we go. Wow, look at this. Two wonderful meat dishes. One veal a la Chateaubriand. Right. And this and was the... A caprese, a filo mignon bone-in with sautéed lentils and veal broth with arancini. And of course, this is only two of what they have here at Plaza Volare. Would you believe we have time for dessert? Absolutely. A very quick dessert. One more break. Stay with us here on The Melting Pot. Promotional consideration provided by Monteverdi Vinator, CMC Imports, 
Bruno and Nick Distributors. Welcome back to Plaza Volare here on Cote Lies. When we speak of dessert, this is a very unique establishment because get this, their own homemade ice cream. Go, Pino. What type of ice cream is this? Janduja. Janduja ice cream. Look at this. The machine goes on. Oh. Wow, this is fresh. This is just one of the many desserts that we're going to go back in the kitchen to prepare for you. And this has been freezing for how long? Questo 10 minuti. Oh, it's been only freezing for 10 minutes. Okay. Exactly. Wow, look at this. Cremoso. Can I can I taste it? Sure. This is my favorite part. Oh my god. Very chocolatey, very hazelnutty. Nucelle, noce a bit, huh? Esattamente. Ah, noce, okay. Cioccolato gianduia sarebbe cioccolato con noci dentro. All right, let's go see what Pino and Giulio are going to prepare with this wonderful ice cream inside the dessert kitchen. Follow me. Would you believe they fry ice cream here at Plaza Valare? Welcome back. Pino is frying ice cream in there. And Giulio, we have executive chef as well here, pastry chef Joe. Hi, Joe, how are you doing? Tell us, he's frying ice cream. What exactly is going to go into that? Well, with the ice cream here, we just prepared a, a very simple coolie with some fresh uh, raspberries. We might top it off with some icing sugar. Okay. As a second dessert. Yes, go ahead. As a second dessert, we got our, our traditional tzepel at San Giuseppe. Which are Italian beignets. They're Absolutely. called San Giuseppe it's after a, the pizza. It's a puff pastry that's, right. uh, that's fried, okay. then stuffed with uh, ricotta, a touch of sugar, and some chocolate chips. Nice. And to finish it off, we'll do it with some icing sugar. Accompanied in this dish, here we go. Accompanied in this dish will be a, a nice bread pudding with some fresh cranberries and uh, roasted panettone. Which is we have here already prepared. Absolutely. These are, this is the panettone, which is the Italian shortbread. And he's just preparing the just before and after it's version. Not, it's a very easy dessert to make. Uh, a traditional creme anglaise which we will just fill up the ramkin. And look at this, Julio, the ice cream here is here ready. it's coming out, look at that. This is what fried ice cream looks like. This fried is ice a, cream. in New Orleans tradition, by the way. And I'll let you The ice cream was that. made, as you saw before, uh, earlier on, it was made with uh, the Torono and the uh, walnut, okay. which is gonna be placed on the dish. Okay. Finished with a little chocolate syrup, or so, also you could use some reduction of balsamic here. Okay, so this goes into the oven. These things over here, which we which we prepared, and through the magic of television, here they are, right here. Go ahead, Joe, do your stuff. As we wrap things up here, look at that. My God, everything is homemade. And there's is there a little uh, white sugar? Can I put the white oh, sugar? Where does go. it go? Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Over the ice cream. Go ahead. That's over fine. the ice cream here, like that. Great. Like that. And a little bit here. You're hired. There you go, folks. Desserts and everything else here at Plaza Bolera. Pino, come over here. Come around and say thank you, everybody. We want to thank, of course, Giulio, Dimino, of course, Pastry Chef Joe, and Pino. Good job. You okay? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Plaza Bolera, there's the website on the screen. That's all the time we have for now. Until the next time here on The Melting Pot, I'm Mose Persico. Buon appetit. We'll see you next week. Promotional consideration provided by Plaza Volare. Rose Hill Foods, the flavor people. Advanced Biomechanical Rehabilitation Center, AL Limited. Raymond Weil, Watches of Geneva, Switzerland. Sacred Heart School, the Sacred Heart School of Montreal, celebrating 150 years of excellence in education in 2010-2011. Chiat, transcending time for 60 years. Tiamo Entertainment, to set the mood right for all your celebrations. Saputo, a family tradition since 1954. Linter Marche Lagoria, three locations to serve you best. Padessa Group, the specialists in Italian brands. BMW Laval, where joy is refusing to wait. Mose Persico's wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. So here we are, Plaza Volare, in one of five kitchens with not one but two chefs. This is co-executive chef Nino Di. Di Nino. Not me, no, it's Maybe I can do that. Let's try, see. try. Oh, look at that, huh? Not bad, eh? Yeah, be careful, you're going to put the kitchen on fire. Not bad, eh? <laughs> okay. I bet you Pino learned how to tie a shoe as, as a very young age. Eh? <laughs> hey, Pino, you learned to tie your shoes when you were, what, two years old, maybe? He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand. It's okay, just keep cooking. It's good he doesn't understand.